Welcome to the next lecture on Point.io, in which we're going to be focusing on programming the sensor which we've plugged in in the previous lecture on this slot number one, input zero. So just to double check what we've done in the previous section, if I put something in front of that sensor, as you can see, it toggles to a one. If I remove that object, it goes back to the zero. So essentially the sensor is able to pass information to the PLC. And today we're going to be programming the inputs and outputs on our rack correctly so that they work in our PLC. And so that we have access to the proper tags as well as a proper structure, which is going to be debounced on the PLC side. So without any further delay, let's get started. Before we get started with today's video, we just wanted to quickly point out all the great content we've been releasing on the Solus PLC YouTube channel. And this includes industrial automation, PLC programming, as well as HMI development. And if you enjoy this type of content, we would really appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell in order to receive the latest and greatest content we will be posting to the channel. So as I've mentioned previously, the way for you to figure out which tags are connected to which module, you can essentially select the module in your IO tree and the tags are going to be listed below. So depending if it's an input or an output module, the tags are going to be slightly different, but that's the way to figure out what's going to go where. And here we're going to start with slot number one, which is a digital input card. And the way I usually set up my tags is I go back to the main program and then I go into the input section. So this has already been pre-created on the PLC. In case you need to add this, you need to right click main program. You need to create uh, add and then a new routine. We're going to do it in ladder logic just to simplify the process. If I double click this routine, you'll notice that I have nothing set up as of right now. So once again, I'm going to go back into the controller tags and I'm going to find the tag for the first card once again. So that's going to be one input and I can go to monitor tags just to make it easier. So this is going to be this the dot zero dot one dot two all the way to dot seven and going back to the routine. All I'm going to do is create a very simple structure, which is going to essentially take the tag on the input side and then store it in a local Boolean. And the reason why this is done is so that in case something happens to this input, you need to move the wire or anything else just um, fails on a hardware, you can really easily reassign this uh, different input to your uh, local tag. So that just makes it really easy to, uh, to work with. So I believe we have this tag, which is called, um, let me double check in a different routine, I've already pre created a couple of tags, but essentially, this is going to be in loc one. And here we're just going to start off with index number zero. I'm just going to remove this description that I had in the past and I'm going to add my own. So I'm going to click control D to add a description. Alternatively, you can right click the tag and then you will have to um, edit main operand description. So this is going to be our box counter photo eye, so PE. And the, re the way you set this up is that you will tell the PLC with the state when the sensor is actually flagged. So when the sensor is flagged, that means there is no box in front of it. So no box. And what I mean by that is essentially the tag is going to be high when there is no box because we have a reflector on the other side of the sensor. So let's just compile this really quickly and check that the tag I'm assuming there's going to be no problems, but essentially here's the sensor with the reflector set up on my desk. When I put my hand in front of it, as you can see, it just toggles back to zero. And the reason why we do this once again is so that in the program, you can use this counter and we'll do that shortly, but I do want to create all the tags for that specific card. And like I said, there's going to be eight of them before we go on further. Here's what I like to do as well. So I'm going to give the first rung a description of what the device or what the hardware is. So this is going to be local point IO rack one slot one. And here I usually put in a description. So this is going to be 24 VDC input sync. And usually I give the card as well. So this is going to be a 1734 IB8, 1734 IB8. 
Perfect. So that's going to be slot one. This way, when you look at the program, you know exactly where this is coming from. And whoever is troubleshooting the system in the future is going to know what is going on. Now, what do we need to change here? So we definitely need to change all the references. So I'm just going to go through, delete these old descriptions, and we need eight of these. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, zero, one, two, this may seem a little bit tedious, but once you set up all of your hardware, it's really easy for you to go back and to essentially, once you're ready to start up the machine or once you're ready to integrate this into your system, you can very easily double check that the IO is working. So this is going to be one, two, and do note that there's a, an alternative way, which is going to be setting this up through structured text which may be a little bit faster depending on your level of proficiency but ladder logic you do need to go through and essentially uh, create each one of these tags so we have these tags created here as you can see i put in this box counter photo i usually when i have nothing on the input landed i do label it as spare so we can just go through and kind of give these a description so once again, this is done so that it's easy to troubleshoot, but also in case somebody goes back into your code, they know exactly what's going on and they can realize that you only have a sensor landed on the first input. Now, there's going to be an input loop. If you're not familiar with loops, do uh, reference some of my tutorials that I've posted in the past, but essentially we're going to set up a loop instruction as well. So I'm going to create a for loop right here four and then routine name is going to be that zero two b b input loop index let's see if we have this index initial value is going to be zero terminal value is going to be seven we're just going to double check if that's fine let's see if we put that instruction in it shouldn't it, it is out of bounds so this terminal value cannot be seven let's see here we're going to clear false. Let's put that at six. And let's put the processor back into run mode. I've talked about this fault as well. Let's see here. Go to faults. Try by a fault routine code 20 array subscript to large or control data position or length invalid. So Let's see here, main task, input loop. Array subscript too large. Input loop, let's see what we're using. So we are using, we're using a different index than what I thought, let's see here. So we don't have that, we're going to use this index instead. I'm going to remove this, let's go back. And we're going to clear the errors, clear faults. Actually, that should be, hmm. Okay, perfect. So we are going through all of the indexes. And what this allows us to do is not only are we using these eight bits, but we also, I've created within this loop, different timers, which we can configure. So let's go back into this. Let's go into the properties here, actually not properties, let's monitor these tags. So there are going to be different tags and timers essentially, which we can um, which we can manipulate. So as you can see here, the preset is going to be 500, which effectively means that once something goes in front of the sensor, as you can see, the accumulated value doesn't trip the sensor immediately or doesn't trip the other Boolean immediately but instead it goes to a different Boolean, which could be used to debounce the, this photo eye. So effectively, when a box comes in front of this photo eye, it takes 500 milliseconds to actually confirm that the box is there. And this prevents false triggers where, for example, the box vibrates on the conveyor, which may trigger it unnecessarily. That being said, let's go back into some kind of a general routine. So this is our general routine which isn't doing much at this point, and we can create a simple counter. So let's do this. 
I'm going to just create a CTU instruction, which is a simple counter. So let's name this uh, box counter, new box counter, counter PLC box, create, preset. So let's say we need to count up to 10 boxes. I'm just going to um, add this logic in. And then I'm going to go back into my input loop and double check that once my timer is done, I should be calling this tag. So let's see here. Well, actually, it's going to be the inverse because my timer needs to be off for 500 milliseconds. So it's going to be this tag. Let's see here. So monitor. And then I'm going to go into this first tag. Perfect. So that should be good. I'm going to add an XIC instruction. So think of this as the same the same input that we have our sensor on, except that it needs to be off for 500 milliseconds before it counts box. So let's see here, we have this on. And then when I have a box in front of this, it's going to count down. And essentially, when the box finished being there, then it's going to count up. So this counts how many boxes have passed in front of our photo eye. And when it reaches 10, of course, that counter is going to be done. And this can be used for any logic. So as you can see, it's done. So you could say, for example, this is a palletizing layer or some kind of a skew that has completed. And of course, this photo eye can be used for many, many different other applications. And it's just an example of point IO functionality. You can just as easily tie in this input to a sensor, which for example, checks if the motor is running, checks if a certain valve has been opened, closed. So there's many, many different applications, but that's just the basic functionality of point IO, as well as how to program these inputs. On the output side, you'll have a similar structure. So here currently I do have something set up. It's not set up for point IO. It is set up for local tags. That being said, if you want to copy the structure for your point IO tags, it's going to be exactly the same way for your digital tags. So do pay attention to the fact that we have two slots on the output side, which are going to be three and five, but they will be set up exactly the same way. So these local tags defined on the PLC side are going to be triggering these um, point IO rack five output tags, for example, in, uh, in this case. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.